ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Roundtable. You're watching us on uh, Broadway World or listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network. Everyone, Jackie's back. And look, she was here for the first season. And I'm more scared than ever because you never know what Jackie Beat is going to say. But you know what Jackie Beat will always do? She brings looks, y'all. And she has an all-star lineup of people that she is being a psychotherapist. Oh, good God. Jackie B, welcome back to the round table. Hi, everybody. I just rolled out of bed. I'm embarrassed because I'm not wearing a lick of makeup. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell you look back. Look, look, look at this face. This is so gorgeous. Thank you. I mean Beat. Wig, yes. costumes, clothes. I didn't put nails on though. So Jackie, I who has time for nails? You're a television icon. Yeah, I'm also funny. So, you know, who R needs right, you're also funny. Oh my God, please don't show that. Okay, what's going on with these bangs? I well, They look great. You're giving Taylor Swift bang. I love a Taylor Swift bang. Oh my God, I'm trying to fix it, but you know when it's backwards and you can't figure yeah, out what's way. It's very hard. I okay. Do you. Are you enjoying being a psychotherapist, Jackie Beat? No, I do it for the money. I never enjoy anything. Are you new? No, I do it for the money. There she is. Oh, wait a Dr. Jackie Beat is on OutTV and she's an unlicensed psychotherapist, like we said. And I love the, the phrase for this season, half the doctor, twice the Jackie. I mean, does that not... When I came up with that, I was like, that's perfect. It's more bitchiness, more drag queen, and a little less, you know, like touchy feely, you know, hippy trippy. Yes. Well, can we, a little bit about Jackie. Jackie, I don't know if the young kids out here know, but you know, you did a cabaret in New York City that lasted for like 162 years. Like you have pay 18 month, an 18 month run that was what? Supposed to be not very long at all. Your stage shows are legendary. Well, I think we did it one night thinking like, will this even work? Now this is gonna sound, you know, I have a song with Alaska Thunderfuck. Am I allowed to say fuck? Yeah, you could say whatever you want. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No, so I did a song with Alaska Thunderfuck called I Invented That. And it's very tongue in cheek. You know, it's about an older drag queen who claims to have invented everything. But I will say, Back in the 90s, when I did this show at Fez, it was called Fez uh, Cafe, uh, Fez Below Time Cafe. Anyway, no drag queen was doing a 90 minute one person show where I did all these songs, went out into the audience and, you know, talked to people and did the whole, you know, um, Don Rickles, you know, kind of crowd work. Nobody was doing that. They were doing shows and they were, you know, doing group shows, but nobody was doing like a 90 minute one person. Then that kind of became a thing. So I invented that. J Jackie Beat invented that. And for the record, Jackie Beat sings, y'all. She's not just lip syncing here. She sings. She does. Come on. Hey, Jackie, when you're not on stage being Jackie Beat and you're not on television doing Dr. Jackie, is the rumor true? Are, have you been doing Golden Girls, the musical? Oh, not the musical. It's just episodes of the Golden Girls. And here's, let me, let me tell you something. I know a lot of queens do the Golden Girls, which is, you know, amazing, but we do it better. Anyway, no, because it's like me and Sherry Vine, another legendary performer, uh, Sam Pancake, who's hilarious. And, you know, you'd recognize him from all these TV shows, you know, like even Friends back in the day and, you know, Gilmore Girls and all these amazing shows. Uh, sometimes our rose is Drew Drogi, who is absolutely hilarious. The next time we're doing it, uh, Gay Pride in New York, uh, Kelly Mantle is playing Rose because Drew is so talented and, you know, very booked and blessed. So here's my point. We do... Uh, I call it reruns in pantyhose because it's like reruns of your favorite TV show, but by drag queens. It's really good, isn't it? I come up with really good. I'm good with the, yeah, reruns in pantyhose. So anyway, here's my point. We've done Who's the Boss, Facts of Life, Designing Women, and I'm gonna be perfectly honest, we had to rewrite those and turn those into musicals and make them really funny and filthy and rewrite it. The Golden Girls are so well-written we do two episodes and we put our spin on it. We make, you know, fun of stuff. 
and we have our moments and it's super campy, but no, we really do the actual script. I might not, maybe I shouldn't be saying that because legally, anyway, it's completely original. No. So anyway, yes, we do girl, Golden Girls Live. Girls is with a Z and we add an exclamation point and hopefully that way we won't you know, get a cease and desist. Well, if you're going to be here for Pride, I have to be there because I'm out here in New York and I need to be. Jackie, I'm going to be there. Oh, yeah. We're doing it at uh, Red Eye. And then we are doing it one night only uh, Fire Island, I believe, at the Ice House. Of course you are at the Ice House where all of the, the cool queers are out and about in the, in the Fire Island. They're not going to put you on some, you know, the Pines boardwalk somewhere. They're going to put Jackie Beat up in the palace. Well... Oh. Can, can we talk about the guests? You've outdone yourself for season two. Uh, sorry, Sherry Vine was texting me. We have oh. a photo shoot later, and she literally just texted me, oh, if you have a fake cigarette, bring that. She knows that I have literally anything a person could ever need. Like, I need a... I ha I'm like the prop... I'm, I'm the carrot top of drag. I was going to say, the Gallagher of... Perfect. <laughs> So anyway, I apologize. What was the question? No, please. Season two, you've outdone yourself with guests. In my head, I pictured listing the guests and this turning into, you know, the Aretha Franklin, Taylor Swift, Pretty Gowns uh, conversation because I thought, oh no, we're going to go through this. But you have Neil Patrick Harris on your show. Yes. Well, we did uh, Drag Me to Dinner. And, you know, they're incredible. Him and David Bertka, they're, they're just amazing. And... I said, can you guys do this? You just do it on your phone. I'll even write it for you. You know what I mean? It'll be so easy. And, you know, it's just funny how people are just like, uh, you know, like I'm the same way. Just like, uh, I don't know about this. So we were doing Celebrity Family Feud in Atlanta. And I was like, I have an idea. Why don't we do it like right now here in the dressing room? You guys, it's a minute long. You know what I mean? Like it's very short. And unlike the others, I will physically be here and maybe I come in between the two of you at the end is sort of, you know, this like plot twist. So that's what we did. So they're very, very supportive and they want to be, it's just sometimes like when Parker Posey, that's right, Parker Posey is one of the guests. She really is, I wrote that scene because she is so clueless when it comes to tech stuff. So it's like, girl, the next time you're in makeup, you know, in your trailer or your dressing room, just read these lines and I'll make it look like we're talking. And even that was a little overwhelming for her because she's such a magical unicorn. You know, she's like, yes. I don't know, how do I do this? And I was like, can't you find a young person to help you? Well, and now she's, I will have to say this, now she's in Thailand filming White Lotus 3 and she keeps fucking texting me pictures of the delicious food and like, you know, the beautiful palm trees and, you know, so I'm so jealous. I almost went with her as her emotional support drag queen. <laughs> we love the White Lotus and we love Parker Posey. Yes. And we, we love Jane Lynch and we love Michelle Visage and we love Oscar Montoya who's been on this show. You have a really, what a group. Let me tell you something. Here's what I really love. I'm like, Jane and I go way back. We were in a comedy group called For Entertainment Purposes Only with Melanie Hutzel from Saturday Night Live. Um, just, you know, uh, Kate Flannery, like all these people like were, it's unbelievable. I'm the least successful of all of them. Anyway, now I'm depressed. No, so we go way back. Here's what I love. I was like, I thought maybe you could be like calling me from the audience of a Broadway show and you are about to rip a giant fart. So there's no like, oh, maybe not that idea. She's like, yeah, I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> so not like that's a spoiler alert. That's what happened. Well, if that didn't make you just want to check out season two of Dr. Jackie on LTV, I mean, Jane Lynch had a Broadway show ready to let one go. And guess what? She does. And she does. And then of course, Deborah, Debbie, Harry, Jackie. You mean the lead singer of the seminal new wave band Blondie, who is a member of the rock and roll hall of fame. Yeah, she did it. I know for you. 
Can I tell you something? Please. I was texting with Paul Rubens, AKA Pee Wee Herman. And he was like, Jackie, I love you so much. I want to do this so bad. And I kept, you know, kind of like, you have to be gentle with these people. You have to kind of, and I even say this in the text messages or the, you know, on the phone call or in the email, I say, there's a fine line between telling you how much I want you to do this, how much I idolize you and pressuring you. So I want you to know that like, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, take it or leave it. I totally understand if you don't want to do it. I want you to do this. I adore you. You are one of the reasons I am who I am. So you have to, but I understand, you know, that like it might not work out. And, you know, so in a way I want you to do it, but no pressure. So I'm texting with him back and forth and he's like, I really want to do it. And I'm like, how about this idea? How about this idea? Oh my God, that sounds great. But at the end of the texting session, he was like, you know, I really, I love you so much and I want to do it, but it's just not a good time. And then two months later, he was gone. So I wish he'd have done it because it would have been great, but I totally understand. So that's like the one that got away, you know? And Chris Pine almost did it because I was in a movie. Well, Chris Pine wrote and directed a movie called Cool Man, which is in theaters right now. And he asked, uh, there's a scene where they go to a drag queen uh, version of the Golden Girls. And so he put us in his movie and then we just, we were doing the episode. I don't know if you know the Golden Girls very well. Okay. I think you do. It was, I was being polite. <laughs> so anyway, we did the episode that ends with Burt Reynolds at the end. He just walks mm -hmm. in and literally like one line. And we had different people playing Burt Reynolds. I mean, like women, drag queens, trans people, like every, we didn't care, you know, black people. It didn't matter. You didn't have to look like, you know, just put a big mustache on and a, you know, cowboy hat. So I love the way black people, can you believe it? Black people. So anyway, here's my point. We just reached out to him thinking there's no way in hell. We were like, would you play Burt Reynolds? It's one line. He shows up to this tiny little theater in Silver Lake. And at the very end of the episode, he walked out and I mean, every person in the room screamed because Chris Pine is a huge star. Huge. And started filming and taking pictures and stuff. So he is just amazing. And he almost did it, but there was a problem. I'm not exactly sure. I think it was like something like Screen Actors Guild problem. And his assistant was like, I think we can make this happen, but we need more time. And we didn't have more time. There was obviously a deadline. So maybe for season three, if I, you know, like sacrifice a goat or something, which is not even a funny joke because I'm vegan. Then you'll join the Illuminati too. I mean, that's one of the, I think that's one of the steps to the inner circle of showbiz. When we, what, you have all of your favorite drag queens as well. Bianca, Peppermint, uh, Trixie, Lady Bunny, Alaska, all your, all the girls are- Willem. Yeah. So, I mean, we're leaving Willem. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that scene where it's Willem, Bianca, and Alaska, and then when you think it couldn't possibly get any better, all of a sudden Trixie pops up. It's pretty crazy. The star- I, I need to watch this show. I need to see you live. I need to come because you're a, the best mess in the best way. Wait a minute, what? It, with love. <laughs> okay. Are you are you insinuating that I filled this up with vodka right before this interview? I might have I might have seen a little something something something. <laughs> My people will be contacting you. Just right after the Golden Girls. No, I'm kidding. They're not sending you a letter. No one is sending anyone a letter. Follow Jackie, everyone, on Jackie Beat on Instagram. I follow. I'll be following. Season two of Dr. Jackie is out on Out TV, right in time for Pride. But every day's Pride when you know you're Jackie Beat yeah. and you're me and we're us. Welcome. Look how fucking gorgeous I am. You are, Jackie, you're so gorgeous. Look, I just can't. I just, I, Jackie. I know. Oh, I know. My there are people pleasuring themselves to this right I, now. I gotta go take a cold shower now, Jackie. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I love you being here. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much, honey. And I just I hope everyone will watch the show because I we will love be. season three. I have a few. You know, I'm trying to get a few people. 
I'm, I'm my friend. I, I know we're signing off, but my fr- I will leave you with this. You got to leave, you know, like a, a real cliffhanger. Um, my friend, I'm trying to bring this friend of mine, you know, who's kind of a big wig on to help me with season three. And if that happens, we might get, we might get Paula Abdul and Dolly Parton. I'll die. I would die. I will literally die. I can't even imagine. And on that note. I want to see your cell phone. I want your contact list because Jackie Beat knows everyone. Yeah, yeah. Mwah. We'll be watching. Thank you. Thank you.